Hey, Takuma. Hi, first graders. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today is a fun day. It is a fun day. But before we get started, let's check in with our zones. Friends, how are you today? What zone are you? How are you feeling? What's your body feeling? What are your emotions feeling? Hmm. Take a moment and think about it. Awesome. How are you today? I'm good. I'm in the green zone. I'm focused. I'm ready to learn. Great. Yeah. How are you? Um, my brain and my emotions are in the green zone. That's my body good. still in the blue zone. Yeah. That's good. Though. It happens. We're glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here too. Mr. Kevin, how are you today? I am in the uh, the mostly green zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I got some technical issues uh, going on. Is it so, putting you in the red zone, the yellow zone, or the blue zone? Not the red zone, because you know what? Friends, nothing is that important. What a good lesson. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen Mr. Kevin in the red zone. Only on um, our zones chart. That's Remember correct. Remember that one time he put a picture of him oh. in there? Sometimes he's been like actually <laughs> in the red zone on the chart, but I don't think That's I've ever right. seen Mr. Kevin act in the red nope. zone. No. Nope. Mr. Kevin's very good at managing his emotions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, When he's in the red zone, he follows the stop and stay cool step. Yeah, so he just doesn't breath. get there. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Oh. Well, thank I you. I have a few things to learn from Mr. Kevin. That's true. It's true. Well, friends, what are we going to do today? We are going to talk more about everything that we've oh. learned in our unit about plants and animal structure mm -hmm. and how they help them to survive. And then we're going to take that information we know. And we're going to learn how to write really amazing sentences as first mm -hmm. graders. We're going to start. We really haven't done it in first grade here at TV Classroom, at least, a nonfiction writing. It's going to be so fun. And it's something that then your teacher, if they want to, can take further. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you how to start it. Mm -hmm. And then you can continue it if you want, or mm -hmm. your teacher continue it if you want. Mm -hmm. And you can see how you can make a really awesome nonfiction mm -hmm. piece of text. Mm -hmm. You can take your text and go through the editing and revising process mm -hmm. and then end up publishing something that you could share be for amazing. us to read. That would be great. And it Nonfiction text comes in many different forms. It so does. you get to choose how you want to share that information, which is mm -hmm. kind of fun. So before we begin, three personal standards are so important. Today and every day, we, we all agree to show respect, respect make, make good, good decisions, decisions, solve problems. problems. Something you need to have today is something to write on. Mm -hmm. So it can be a journal, it can be a whiteboard, it can be a piece of paper, just something that you can write on that you have permission to use, mm -hmm. and something to write with that you have permission to use. Mm -hmm. And because you're going to want to follow along with us. Today. You're going to want to you get your writing that you completed during our last session yes. where we had you jot down notes. Jot down your notes. All the things you remembered that you learned or that you thought you knew that changed. Because now you're going to take those quick jots that you made, those quick notes, and you're going to turn them into really high quality sentences, making sure that we have proper grammar, punctuation. That it stays on topic, stuff. that it makes sense. Because first graders, you're almost second graders, which means it's time for you to start making those high quality sentences. Mm -hmm. Not just what you think you know and jotting it down, but there's actually a way we write sentences mm -hmm. and we're gonna start teaching you that. Okay, let's okay. review the scientific process mm -hmm. that we have been going through. And we use this graphic and we've talked about how there's arrows going all different directions. Because when we're talking and learning about science, it's not just, I learned this, then this, then this, then Ta -da, this. I'm done. You're actually never done with science. Never. You're always questioning and wondering and learning new things. Which There's... is also kind of exciting because then I never have to know all, everything. Right. You could never know everything about a topic. There's always something new to learn and discover, which makes science really cool because you never always know. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not something that you can master. You get to just do the process over and over and learn more and more, and there's endless possibilities for learning. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who likes to learn really interesting things, science is the thing for you. Mm -hmm. We've spent a lot of time in this red part where we're making we observations. Have. We've been asking a ton of questions, mm -hmm. sharing data and ideas, and reading. reading. We've done some reading about science too. Then we've been gathering data and going mm -hmm. to experts and interpreting those observations mm -hmm. and getting information down about why things are the way they are. Mm -hmm. So then we're either going to go back up and ask more questions or we're going to answer our questions, learn more, solve problems, and satisfy that curiosity, which I think we're at that satisfy the curiosity point. Mm -hmm. And the answering questions. Right. How do animals use their structures to survive? That's the big question that we've been talking about for and weeks And I think we now. have some great information we that we've learned from our texts, 
from Mrs. Wally and Ms. Azam, from going out into nature mm -hmm. and observing it, and from the experts we've interviewed. Lots of experts. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna review our science words, words. that we've been learning, mm -hmm. specifically the word, the new word that we learned during our last session. So Mr. Kevin, get ready. Okay, here it's we go. time for our Big science word! Good job, Mr. Kevin, that was amazing. Thank you. You will remember that we learned the word echinoderm. echinoderm. And an echinoderm is a marine animal with parts coming out from the center and hard, bony outer walls, and or we, an exoskeleton. We looked at the sea star. Should we just we review that now? Let's do it. And then we'll do the chant? Perfect. Okay, so let's look at the sea star input chart that we made last time. We talked about how it has the mouth that comes out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how we did it? Ready, Ms. Hassan? She's the mouth, here's the stomach, whoop, and then it back in. Ooh. That's part of an echinoderm. They have the mouth at the center that eats. And then on the other side, it's all hard and bony and has all these structures mm -hmm. that helps it survive, especially when the tide goes out. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just sitting there waiting for the water to come back in, hoping that no predator comes and eats mm -hmm. it. And how does it stay there? It has tube feet with suction cups on the end. What a neat structure. And we watched them move in the water. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's like they, they kind of use the water to let it float and then they suction back down. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. We also talked about how common sea stars start as a sea star larva. And it looks totally different than a sea star. It has different structures. It does. And so we were talking about looking at that and how amazing that zooplankton is mm -hmm. and how that zooplankton goes through metamorphosis to come up and become this sea star. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. It's a cool process. It is. All right. Let's review our chant. And this chant is important because we're going to use it as an example of those of great science sentences. Yep, and we're going to use, hopefully try to use some of the vocabulary that we've learned mm -hmm. to help us write some really strong, clear, descriptive, impressive sentences. sentences. So get ready to do our chant with us today. Animals here, here. Animals, animals there, animals, animals, animals everywhere. everywhere. Enormous animals reaching, hungry animals chewing, sleepy animals nesting, and energetic animals hopping. Animals in the river, animals around the rainforest, animals under the sea, and animals throughout the savanna. Animals here, animals there, animals, animals everywhere, animals, animals, animals. You know what I'm thinking about too is the pill bug. Yeah. Remember when we learned about the pill bug? It also had an exoskeleton. <gasps> you know what she's gonna go get? I can see it. The reason I remember is I can see the pill bug input chart sitting over on the wall. So Miss Austin just ran across the TV classroom set. She's gonna run back. Here she comes doo -doo -doo, to save the day. And we learned all about the structures of the pill bug, how it has the seven joined, jointed legs, the pairs of jointed legs. It has the thorax, the mm -hmm. large head and the antenna to find its food. It has the abdomen that has all its digestive parts in it. And it has the uropod, it's part of its tail. And it has that hard exoskeleton mm -hmm. and these jointed thorax parts allow it to roll up and protect the soft parts of its body. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's an isopod. So we've got a pill bug and we've got a sea star. And we talked about lots of other different kinds of animals too. We have. Now we get to the scientists who write. Yes. Because scientists, that's something they do. Mm -hmm. Scientists don't just do the observ observing and looking. They also write to make sure they understand the information. This is where we take our thinking and we synthesize it and put into, it into sentences sentence. that other people can read to learn from. So I'm gonna move my stool back because I'm gonna move this chart paper over and we're gonna show you a way that you can get your information into sentences that make sense. Okay, because sentences can be kind of hard if no one's ever taught you how to write them. They just say like, write what you're thinking, but that's not very helpful. 
They always said that to me in school. And so I'd write what I was thinking, and then they'd tell me that that wasn't right. So I love, they would. They'd be like, but that's not how you write it. And I'd be like, but I don't know how to write it. You told me to write what I was thinking, that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And I would get really, really frustrated. So let's see if I'm on camera. You are. Mr. Kevin, can we, the main camera, mm -hmm. can we back it up just a little bit so that I can move a little bit? Sure, back it up. Back this it one? up. No, Ooh, the no. other camera. Oh, the other camera. Okay. Because I'm going to be kind of like moving. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. That's perfect. There we go. Perfect. We're going to fold that down. Okay. Beautiful. So, Ms. Oslin, you get to tell me what to do, and I'm going to be your scribe. Okay. We are thinking about our essential question, which is how do plants and animals use their structures to survive? That's the question that we're mm. trying to answer. This is a really broad question. It's huge. It's huge. So we're going to narrow it down and maybe think about one plant or one animal that has mm. two or three structures to help it survive that you can write about. So it has to be something that you know a lot about. Well, I can think of two different ones I could pick from just off the top of my head. Which ones? The pill bug and the sea star. Oh, yeah. We did input charts on them. We saw them in real life. We, we looked did. at them. We asked experts about them. We did. We, we also, know what they do. We know how they survive. Mm -hmm. We also went to Swan, Swan Creek and looked and talked with Chris and Leka about a lot of different plants oh, that have yes. different structures that help them survive. Right, like the, the nettles. The nettles. That was one. And what was the sticky one that he stuck to oh, him? Oh, I forget the name of that one. Was it a milkweed or something like that? Something, I don't know, I think it was milkweed. Do you remember, Mr. Kevin, what that one was called? I do not. I don't. But we could say the sticky plant, and then right. we'll go back and find out what it is, and then we can change, change it. the word with or the proper word. Or you could pause right now, go watch Swan Creek, find the name, and then come back and watch the rest of this. Yeah. Great thing about DV Classroom. It's beautiful. So first graders, you are going to take some think time. We're going to give you about 15 seconds to think about what plant or animal do you, you know a lot about that you can write two or three structures that they have that help them survive. Go. Just thinking. Okay. Turn and tell your learning buddy which plant or animal you are going to write about to help it, that has structures that help it survive. You go first. Okay. I would like to write about a sea star because I know a lot of different structures that it has that help it survive. Mm -hmm. So I think I can write a really good paragraph about it. I want to write about a sea star too. Oh, that We didn't plan out. that. We did not plan that. You may have also chosen a sea star. You may have chosen a different organism to write about. And that's fine. That just means you're going to write about your organism when we're writing about the sea star. So you're mm -hmm. not gonna write the sea star facts, but yeah. you're gonna do the same process we're doing, mm -hmm. but you might do a pill bug or you might do- The sticky um, plant. The sticky plant. Or, or the you nettles. might do the nettles, right? Mm -hmm. Or the ferns. We learned about the ferns at we the nature did. center. That's right. So it's do some thinking about that animal and, or organism, excuse me. And when we're writing a paragraph, a paragraph always starts with a topic sentence. That's a big general, sentence that tells your reader what it is that they're going to be reading about. Kind of like animals here, animals there. Kind of animals, like animals, animals here, everywhere. animals there. It tells us we're going to be reading about animals. animals. So what should we make our topic sentence, Miss Oslin? Hmm. What color should I write it in? Let's do, um, let's start with black okay. for our topic yes. sentence. And do we do it at the top? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do and we label it? Topic sentence? Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, in your journal, you need to write topic. We're going to move over a little bit. Yep. Sentence. Sentence. Let's move over just a little bit. Whoop. Hard to do with one arm. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Topic sentence, okay. okay. So our topic sentence is going to be about a sea star that has many structures that help it survive. Sea stars have many structures that help it survive. That tells us that we're gonna re read about sea stars 
and the many structures they have that help them survive. Now, we're using the word many, which means more than one or two. It should be at least three. So again, picking your topic. Make sure you pick a topic that sea you stars. have many information that you ha know about it that you can write about. Sea stars have many structures to help it survive or that helps it survive, that help them survive. Sea stars have many structures to help them survive. Now that I've told my reader what they're going to be reading about, I need to structure my sent the rest of my sentences mm -hmm. that say what the structures are and how they help the sea star survive. Okay, so before we do that, let's make sure everyone has this written down on their paper. Okay. Yeah. Topic sentence, sea stars have many structures to help them survive, or pill bugs have many structures to help them survive, or Sticky plants have many structures to help them survive, or nettles have many structures to help them survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay. Now what do we do, Ms. Oslin? Well, I think when we're writing a sentence, we need to start, or writing a paragraph, which mm -hmm. is many sentences, I need to make sure that I say I have like structure one, structure two, structure three. Just write structure one, structure yeah. two, structure three. Okay. These are gonna be my supporting sentences that provide more detail and information about my topic sentence. So on your paper, you can be writing that as well. Structure one, structure two, structure three. We're kind of creating a graphic organizer that's going to help us organize our thinking. Yeah, this is a great way to organize our thinking. Okay. I think we should change color. Okay. So that we can see that this is like the body of our paragraph. Oh, that's a good idea. How about I do blue? Perfect. Can I just underline mm -hmm. these in blue? Blue is for the body. Okay. Now, structure one. What is a structure that your organism has mm. and how does that structure help it survive? Hmm. I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead, okay. Ms. Oslin. Sea star is a noun. Hmm? Sea star is a noun. Sea star is a noun. That's so a person, I'm place, or thing. I'm going to write it in red. This is going to help us break down our sentence to make sure we have all the parts that make a proper sentence that makes sense. Sea stars. I'm just getting my pens ready. Okay. What do they do, Miss Austin, or what structure do they have? Sea stars have an exoskeleton. And that would be red again, because exoskeleton is it's another, another noun. noun. Now, exoskeleton. Ooh, I was just thinking, I don't know how to spell okay. exoskeleton. So friends, what do we do when we don't know how to spell a word? We'll pull it down, sound it out, and do our best. Mm -hmm. Exoskeleton. And I like to pull it down from the sky. Exoskeleton. X O X X O Skel Sk L I know L is E L L X O Sk L A ton. And it I was thinking it might be a C. So if you're not sure, write what you think. Circle it and We're go back to sure. it later. We'll go back to it later. Okay. Sea stars have an exoskeleton. Now we've said what the structure is, we have to say how it helps them survive. To protect them from predators. Protect. That's a verb. That That's is. an action. Mm -hmm. To protect. Protect them. How does it protect them? We should do how. We should describe how. To protect them from predators by acting like armor. Them from... Should we do predators in red because it's another noun? Yes. Like... Armor. 
Whoa, look at that sentence, Miss Oslin. Sea stars have an exoskeleton. Exo exoskeleton. That's a tricky word. <laughs> it is. To protect <laughs> them from the predators, predators like armor. armor. This is in green because it's an adverb. It's describing mm -hmm. what the verb is How doing. It protects. <sighs> okay, so. Pretty cool. Let's go back and reread our topic sentence and our first or first sentence about our structure to make sure it says what we want it to and it makes, it sense. makes sense. Sea stars have many structures to help them survive. Sea stars have an exoskeleton to protect them from predators like armor. Now, we need a second structure and we need to think about how it protects them or how it helps them survive, excuse me. Mm, I know. Mm. Okay, so we both want to include how the stomach comes out of the mouth. I wonder how we would describe that as a stomach that we could use the word ejects. That's a fun oh, word. That is a fun word. And it's very graphic. Like ejects I can see from it. the mouth. Because it's not, it just doesn't It's a just, good verb. It doesn't just come out of the mouth. It like it, it ejects okay. from the mouth to digest. To grab food? And um hmm. So now we have to think about how this structure helps it survive. Mm -hmm. To provide its body nourishment. Yeah. Okay. So sea stars. Sea stars. Have? Have. A stomach. Whoop. Noun. that projects that ejects ejects excuse me it projects too i guess huh and that's going to be orange because that's the mm -hmm. verb from its mouth mm, wrong color mrs wally from its mouth mouth is a noun and then how does that help it survive? That provides it nourishment. To provide it nourishment. Nourishment. And nourishment is a good word. It's not just food. Nourish. Right? How do you spell nourishment? Nourish. nourish. I believe it's N-O-U. Yep, that's why it looks funny. Mm -hmm. N -O -U -R. I noticed that Mrs. Wally wrote it and then thought about, does that look right? Yeah. Because she's seen it before. That was good. And would nourishment really be bread? Because it's a, or would it be a, a verb? It provides, it's, it's provided, provided to, to it, it, so it's a noun. It's a noun, yes. We would say. Um, so it should be in red. Yeah. Just do this. Yeah. And I'm noticing something about our sentence structures. They're very similar. Mm -hmm. Sea stars have, hmm. Sea stars have, hmm. So when we go back and revise, we're going to want to look at that sentence structure and, and make change it, it up different a bit. so it's more exciting to read. But we're not doing, we're doing that, that right today. now. Right now we're just getting our ideas out. Yep. Okay, and structure. that's all we're going to do today is just get our ideas out and then you can take it further with your teacher or you can go back and revise. Mm -hmm. It'll be great. Okay, structure three. three. Okay. Should we do a different starting structure? Yes. So th maybe we'll start our sentence with, with the, the structure. structure. Hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Tube feet. Tube feet. Still starts with red because their sentence is starting with a noun. Tube feet. Help sea stars. Oh, I've got it. Help sea stars. Grasp strongly. Ooh. Grasp is a verb. Strongly is the adverb. It's describing how it verbs. To keep it safe from predators. Yeah? Yeah. This is another reason, friends, why it's good to collaborate and work with someone else, because you can bounce ideas off each other. 
and get ideas that you wouldn't have come up with on your own. Oh, yeah. Red and Oh, my goodness. First graders, can you believe we've written such strong scientific sentences? With such academic vocabulary? Amazing. Look at all that work you're doing. OK, so we have a topic sentence that introduces our topic. We have three supporting sentences that add more detail. Mm -hmm. Now we need our closing sentence. But before we do that, can we read it and make sure it all makes oh, sense? That's a great idea. Do you yes. notice that we're not just writing all the things we're thinking and mm -hmm. then go, we're stopping and we're thinking mm -hmm. and we're talking? You should be doing the same thing when you're writing. Mm -hmm. sea, sea stars, stars have many structures, structures to help them survive. survive. Sea, sea stars have an exoskeleton to protect, protect them from predators like armor. Sea stars have a strong, strong, it's, this word is stomach. Can we start that sentence yes. over? Sea stars have a stomach that ejects from its mouth to provide nourishment. Tube feet help sea stars grasp strongly to keep it safe from predators. Now, I see that we have predators spelled two different ways. Oh, yeah. So we circle them and we'll come back. Yep. And not sure about that one. Mrs. Wally's spelling isn't great today. That's no, okay. Okay. Did you notice, though, what we're doing as writers? Even teachers don't spell everything right the first time. Mm -mm. And we didn't plan this ahead of time mm -hmm. because that would be real. Mm -hmm. And so we're just writing as we go. And if we don't know, we we'll just circle it and go back and find it later. Yep. This is the first draft. It's not a problem. Mm -mm. What matters is we know what it says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a D. I know it is. Does that look right? That looks right. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. No, I think you're right. I think I'm right. Yeah. Okay. But we'll check it. Okay, we need our closing sentence. Mm -hmm. So our closing sentence is going to wrap it all up. Mr. Kevin? Just to clarify, you are correct. It is predators with a D. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Kevin. He's like our dictionary checker. Just fact checking. Oh, could you check exoskeleton for us too? Well, certainly. <laughs> we'll just use Mr. Kevin. We have a resource. We should use it, right? Absolutely. Strong thinkers use the resources they have. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. What do we want our last sentence? I'm going to go back to black. So our last sentence is what we kind of say, wrapping it all we'll up. Wrap it up. Our concluding sentence, our concluding like a little sentence. present. Yep. Mr. With Kevin? The bow. So teachers, you are mostly right. OK. okay. So skeleton, there is just one L and one not two. L. Look yeah. at that. Very so close. So skeleton. Yeah. So I'm going to write it up here so we know when we go to write it in our final draft that that's the correct mm -hmm. way to write it. Beautiful. Okay. Hmm. What do you think, friends? What could our sentence be at the end? We started with sea stars have many structures to help them survive. thinking something along the lines of like these and other structures help a sea star survive. Or these are just three of the structures. Yes, yes that's what I was that's just much thinking. much better, Mr. Kevin, much these better. These are just three of the structures that help sea stars survive. survive. And what that does is it inspires your reader yes. to then go, do more research because scientific writing yeah you want it to inspire the person yeah. that's reading to go out and search for themselves and have their own questions and wondering because the reader would look at that and say these are only three, three? what, what other ones letters? are there that's right? a great one yes. i love it mr kevin so can you say it again these are just three of the structures that help sea stars survive in their environment. Oh. Because I was thinking of the, you know, the tide pool, mm -hmm. right? The shallow tide pool. Mm -hmm. They are well equipped. To, Very well equipped, yeah, yeah, for that ebbing tide. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to put in the sea. OK. Because they only live in salt water. Yeah. That's true. 
And it provides a little more detail than just in their environment. It's it like, tells well, us where what is, it is their environment in the sea. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, I now, love it. We should go back and reread it and make sure it really makes flows sense. and makes sense. Okay, sea stars have many structures to help them survive. Sea stars have an exoskeleton to protect them from predators like armor. Sea stars have a stomach that ejects from now. Can I say something? Yep. These other words have adverbs that are describing the verb, mm -hmm. but we didn't describe how it ejects. Oh. That ejects from its mouth. Quickly? Does it eject quickly? Slowly? Well, when we saw it, it was still out there, so it's not quickly. Um, maybe like ejects completely? Oh yeah, like it comes all the way so out. So it comes all the way out. Completely, I like that. Uh oh. Hmm. Whoops. Completely. Completely. Come. Meet. L E Y. E L Y. Complete. E L Y. Yes. There we go. Yes. Yep. Completely from its, from its mouth, mouth to, to provide, provide it nourishment. nourishment. That's better. I like that. Yeah. Tube, Tube feet help sea stars grasp strongly, strongly to keep it safe from predators. These are just three of the structures that help sea stars survive in, in the sea. sea. Now, let's do a quick check. Okay. Did we answer our essential question? How do plants and animals use their structures, structures to survive? survive? We picked an animal, or an organism, a sea star. And we told mm -hmm. the structures, and we told how it helps us survive. Mm -hmm. We have a topic sentence, we have three supporting sentences, and, and a, a closing, closing sentence. sentence. We okay. did it. We did it. Did you do it at home? If you did Sea Star, did you have the same ideas of us? Ooh, or did you have some different, different ones? And if you did a different animal, were you thinking about the way their structures help yeah. them survive? <gasps> did you include adverbs that provided really exciting detail about how they verbed? Because imagine if we just said sea stars have an exoskeleton to protect, protect them from predators. Sea stars have a stomach that ejects from its mouth. Tube feet help sea stars grasp to keep it safe from predators. It's not as exciting it's not. as like armor ejects completely, grasps strongly. strongly. Super important. Super important. <sighs> yep. Okay, now first graders, it's your turn mm -hmm. to write your paragraph. If you haven't been doing along it along with us, you get to go do it independently mm -hmm. on your own. If you did it along with us, you get to go and make sure it all makes sense or maybe change a few things. And then you can show us in the TV classroom what you did. You can videotape yourself and read it to us or maybe you wanna turn it into a diagram and show oh. the parts of the Sea Star and read your paragraph. Or maybe you want to act it out and then tell us your paragraph. Yes. You get to choose how you pr show and <gasps> present your informational text. Maybe they want to create a piece of art. Oh, and then they could attach their paragraph yeah. and their art has all the, oh my goodness, that would be amazing. Wouldn't it? You get to choose how you publish your work so that others can learn from you. Mm -hmm. And then you can put it on Flipgrid. If you don't want to put it on Flipgrid, how can they send it to us, Mr. Kevin? Well, uh, just ask your adult to help you send it via email to TV Classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us and the teachers will, will respond. Mm -hmm. Also, you can send them uh, via mail to the TV Classroom headquarters here at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Amazing. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Now is time for our affirmation. This mm. is the time when we get to say positive, uplifting things about what we know and yeah. who we are. So I think today we need to remind ourselves that we are strong scientists who grow and learn. I love it. Let's, is that a, a strong sentence? I am a scientist who, who grows, grows and, and learns. learns. Yes, I love All it. All the time. All the time, I love that. You're never done growing and learning. I grew and learned today. Yeah, let's take a deep breath all together. And say our affirmation. I am a scientist, scientist who grows and learns all the time. time. Excellent job today, first graders. Thank you, first graders. We hope you have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. I'll see you on Flipgrid, and our next episode is something new. Bye, friends.
Hi kids, welcome to Jurassic Parkour. Walk with me. Today we are going on an adventure. We are going to be hiking and running in search of a hidden waterfall. But be warned, there will be dinosaurs. These are the rules. One, keep moving. We will be alternating between hiking and running, but don't stop. If you can't run or walk, try finding other parts of your body you can move. Whenever you hear Dr. Malcolm say, Must go faster. You go faster. Don't stop until we make it to the waterfall. Have fun. Must go faster. Let's run. Look out for those dinosaurs. Must go faster. This way. Go faster. Whoa, that was a close one. Good job, you guys. Keep up the good work. Look out for those dinosaurs. Come on, keep going. Oh, good job, you guys. You're working hard. Whew. Keep up the good work. We can make it. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. We're almost to a rest spot. Good job. Whew. Good job, you guys. Now it's time for a little break. Slow down and let's go at a walking speed. Good job. Look how beautiful this forest is. Boy, this fresh air does feel good, doesn't it? Good job, you guys. You're awesome. Keep up the good work. But get ready. Must go faster. Oh no! More dinosaurs! Look out! Look out, guys! Start running! Get in the herd, you guys, and keep running. Don't fall down. Stay on your feet. Good job. Keep up the good work. Let's make it to the forest. Must go faster. Run, guys, run! First dinosaurs, now volcanoes? Oh, come on. We can do it though, let's go. Keep going, we got this. Whoa. To the trees. Nice job, everybody. We made it to another safe spot. Wow, look how pretty this water looks. Boy, I could go for a swim. We're getting closer to the waterfall, so keep up the good work. All right, here we go, get ready. Catch your breath. All right. Must go faster. More volcanoes! Run! Oh! Whoa! 
Come on, we can do it, guys. Must go faster. All right, here we go, guys. Keep working hard. We're all doing awesome. You're superstars. This has been, we start getting tired, but we're getting closer to the waterfall. So keep working hard, keep moving, and we're gonna make the boat. Good job. I'm proud of you. Woo. Woo. This has been the wildest hike I've ever been on. Woo. But I know we can outrun these dinosaurs. You all have been working hard. Did we lose it? No. All right. We got this. Whoa. He's getting a little bit close. Keep running. Hit the brakes. Whoa. Look out for these ones with the spiny tails. Whoa! Whoa! Must go faster. Whoa! Great job, class! Final stretch! We're almost to the waterfall! Just move as fast as you can! We got this! Come on, run! Whoa! There's the waterfall! We gotta jump! Get ready! Here we go! Here we go! Get ready to jump! Ready? One, two, three, whoa! Nice job, everybody. We made it. Boy, did that waterfall feel good. Now, we're gonna have a little bit of a warm down. We're gonna walk nice and easy to catch our breath and let our heart rate drop down and let our lungs get more oxygen into our body, because that was a lot of hard work. You are all superstars. Thank you for joining me on this amazing Jurassic parkour hike through the woods. Good job, everybody, and we'll see you next time.